Hi, welcome back, uh, everyone. Okay. Have you got a good breather? Okay, uh, I, just, I, I wanted to uh, play as a video um, before we could uh, go on with the lecture. Give me one second. Sorry, guys. Thank you for your patience. Give me one second. Uh, please let me know if if the audio comes through. And I hope it does. Uh, is the audio coming through? I uh, can't hear the audio, Pastor. Okay. Great. Oh, okay. Sorry guys, technical error. Uh, I'm not able to get that audio through. I don't know why. Okay, I'll uh, figure that out uh, in the next class and, uh, and get that sorted. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being with me for three minutes. Okay, uh, we'll just continue from where we left off. Okay, um, so we, we, we ended with the, with the last point in, on in your page uh, 62 is we walk by the truth that has been revealed and search out what is unknown, right? Uh, we, we, don't st we don't let uh, the things that we don't know stop us from ministering divine healing. Uh, with whatever was, has been revealed to us and, and, and everything beautiful has been revealed to us through Jesus Christ. And so we minister from that truth. We walk uh, in that truth, okay? Um, and then we go on to the next uh, crucial question here asked, why doesn't everyone get healed? Right, this is the question that uh, you will have, you would have had, and you will be asked, uh, by a lot of people, uh, you know, as well. Why doesn't everyone get healed? Right? Um, so we readily admit that not every person we minister to gets healed or delivered. Right? Um, I am sure that every great healing evangelist, man or woman of God, has faced this and struggled with answering this question as to why we don't see every person we minister to healed and delivered, right? We've all been asked the question. Uh, the answer to such a question is subjective, relative, since the actual conditions can vary from person to person, individual to individual. Uh, so we do recognize that there can be several things. There could be several variety of reasons, uh, so many reasons as to why, you know, not everyone is being healed. Um, I mean, some unknown to us, some, some reasons unknown to us, uh, we might not know. 
But the point is how we react to these failures is important, right? How we respond to, uh, to these failures is crucial, right? We must always keep in mind that any failure is on our side and not God's side, okay? Um, again, Bill Johnson puts it across like this. He's saying, uh, God's end of the equation is always right. Uh, that means that some, something has to be uh, on, uh, on our side of the equation. So, um, you know, he's always good. We know that he wants to heal. Uh, so his end of the equation is always right. right? Um, so if any failure is on our side and not God's side. God is true to his word. Right? We are in a continuous process of learning and discovering truth concerning God's kingdom. Okay? We are in a continuous process of learning and discovering truth concerning God's kingdom. Okay? Uh, we are talking about an eternal being here. Right? Sometimes we tend to have this tendency of becoming all too familiar with a God we hardly know. Right? Um, so we are in this continuous process of learning who this, uh, you know, who this God is and, and, uh, and how his kingdom functions and his ways. Right? None of us are perfect in our knowledge. Uh, we need to continue pressing in to order truth hidden in his word by his spirit. Okay, so we admit that. And in that, and understanding that fact, we, uh, we don't compromise the truth. Okay, just because we see failure, like, you know, how we respond to it, we can, we can respond to it in two ways, right? One is, okay, you give up, or, you know, I've prayed for 10 people. I have not seen anything. I didn't see a single feather of an angel come down. Uh, no gold dust, no, you know, nothing happened. The hairs on my body didn't stand. So you can respond that way because the healing didn't happen and just give up and walk away from your calling of, of what God has called you to do. Or you can, you know, press in uh, and not compromising the truth, right? We do not change our understanding of God's nature, God's word and Christ's completed work on the cross. Okay, we do not compromise that truth. Okay, these are absolutes. That means it's what they are. It is it. period. Okay, who God is and what he has promised and what Christ has already accomplished on the cross will not change. We must refuse the temptation to modify our theology. Okay, okay. Uh, it's amazing that we can change doctrine and the theology of, the God, of a God we hardly know. Right? So we must refuse the temptation to modify our theology to accommodate our experience. Okay, uh, I prayed, it didn't work. So, you know, everything I've learned about God is not true so far. Okay? <laughs> it can't be like that. Okay? Don't compromise the truth. Right, that's number one. Okay, respond. Learn to respond to failure by. Uh, remember, I said you know, God's end of the equation is always right. So you go close the close your room, uh, go and seek him, and you know you pursue him, and you ask him for insights. Okay. Um, another thing is, don't if if healing doesn't happen, if the person that you pray for doesn't get healed. And if the question arises, don't speculate. Okay, don't like, you know, just simply admit, I don't know. And I it think it's okay to say, I don't know. I love that answer. I don't know. I think, uh, right? So since we, again, do not have all the answers, uh, you know, we must not speculate and pretend to know. Okay, and I, I think this is where a lot of uh, ministers of God leaders, church ministry leaders uh, can fall is that to pretend to know that we have all the answers. And, and it's okay if you don't know. And it's okay for you to say you don't know. But what is important is that you have not compromised on the truth and that you will go on and continue to pray for healing and minister deliverance. Right. So when we are unsure, uh, avoid making statements like you don't have enough faith, that there is some hidden sin, there are some generational curses and so on. Okay, we might just be adding to their unbelief by doing so. 
you could end up hurting people when speaking out of ignorance and sometimes arrogance. Okay, uh, it is sufficient to say, I do not know why you didn't get healed, but God's love for you is certain and his will is that he wants you well. Right? Um, so don't speculate, simply admit, I don't know. Um, ask God for insight and keep, min keep on ministering to the individual. Ask God for insight and keep on ministering to the individual. It is true that not everyone we pray gets healed, but this should not prevent us from pressing in and doing our best to bring healing and deliverance to every person possible. Okay, this should not prevent us from pressing in and doing our best to bring healing and deliverance to every person possible. Um, right, and so uh, at APC, after um, after our Sunday services, uh, you know, and we started this since the pandemic is after our service, we have a post service ministering time right, where people join uh, online through Zoom to get prayed, to get ministered to, uh, you know. Um, and you know, people asking for praying, praying for uh, wanting prayer for healing and deliverance, etc. And and over the year, in the last year and a half, I've see, uh, we've had uh, so many people that we've prayed for keep coming back uh, for prayer for the same reason, um, right? And and it is so important for us as leaders. That as we keep praying for, you know, imagine we as leaders said, like, I just prayed for you last Sunday. Maybe something must be wrong with you. you know? Like, your faith is less, you know, there must be some generational curses. Imagine uh, how, uh, how they would respond. But the fact that we are, you know, willing to keep praying encourages their faith. And they keep coming, you know, and they don't just walk away saying, okay, um, this is not the true God. Um, so it's important that we keep asking God for insight. We keep moving in compassion, as one of you shared earlier, right? And we keep ministering just like Jesus did, right? So we encourage the individual to continue pressing into God, to keep praying, to keep believing, to keep praising God for their healing, and to hold firm to God's word, right? This should be an encouragement to you and I as well. Yes, okay, so we encourage them you know, to pursue him, to know him more, right? get an insight and understanding of how you can be filled and holding on to God's word firmly. Right? And finally, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and flow with what the Spirit of God reveals. So what happens when you're in that secret place, when you're, when you're seeking him, pursuing him, learning to hear his voice, learning to hear his heart, uh, you know, for his people. It, and we, in, in the Gospels, we see time and time again that Jesus would go alone and, and be alone with God and he would pray all night or early in the morning, he would wake up and go and see. And, uh, you know, one of the assignments to go ahead, uh, to go and heal that person by the pool of Bethesda, he must have received that assignment is when he was alone with, you know, praying with, praying to God, his father. Say, so, okay, I want you to go to this place and heal that man and show him our sovereignty. And so in that secret place, we learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then we you keep asking, we keep asking him, I say, okay, Father, what is your heart for this person? Reveal your heart for this individual. Reveal to me. So that allows us to move in compassion and in love. Okay, which is crucial. So, and then glorify God and not the condition. Glorify God and not the condition. What does that mean, right? So we are to glorify God and not the condition. Never magnify the sickness or the oppressive work of the devil. Don't allow yourself to be impressed by the work of the devil. Okay, no sickness or no demonic work is greater than our God. Right? No sickness or no demonic work is greater than our God. Uh, don't be impressed by the sickness uh, or whatever it is. 
uh, just because we did not see healing or deliverance, let us not make it seem that these were too difficult for our God. Oh no, no, this didn't happen because that was stage four cancer. It was too late. Had you come a little early when you're still stage one, God would have healed. <laughs> if you think that really matters, right, to God, it just because uh, you know we didn't see healing and deliverance, um, let us not make it seem that these were too difficult for our God. Right? There is nothing too difficult for our God. Amen. Right? We just need to learn how to release His power more effectively. Okay. Who needs to learn? We need to learn how to release His power more effectively. We need to learn. We need and just like how you are here attending this Bible college course to learn, if we don't show up to the Holy Spirit's class, who is he going to teach? Right? If you don't show up to his class, he, he's not going to teach and you are not going to learn. And so if we are to learn, if we need to learn how to release his power more effectively, we need to attend his class. Right in the room where alone by yourself with him, asking him to reveal the secrets and the mysteries of heaven, um, you know, to fill you with his power. Right? So in spite of the condition, we rejoice, we pray always, and in everything we give thanks because we know who he is. Okay, so glorify God and not the condition. Keep declaring the love of God, the goodness of God. Okay. Um, this leading on to the next point says, God can use a person in spite of sickness, bodily ailments, and any physical problem. God can use a person in spite of sickness, bodily ailments, and any physical problem, or also any spiritual condition as well. Right? Now, what does that mean? Um, for example, uh, so I lead worship, and through the week, from Monday to Saturday, I've lived a lifestyle of sin, right? I drink, I smoke, I watch things that I shouldn't be watching, etc., uh, etc. Et There's absolutely no preparation until Sunday. But then Sunday morning, nobody knows my secret lifestyle, but I happen to be a worship leader at a church. That's the only thing everybody else knows of devotion is a worship leader. I get up there, I lead worship, and God decides to show up. Uh, not because of me, but in spite of. Right? He will decide to show up because he is good and he loves his people. Are you with me? Right? That's one of the spiritual conditions. And and I know of so many other people, you know, evangelists uh, uh, who, who, who have beautiful healing ministries, who, who minister in healing and deliverance, but have their own physical condition as well, physical problems, right? One, uh, Eric Johnson has a, a, a speech impediment problem, uh, or I've seen, etc. and the list can go on, but God will choose to use that individual in spite of and not because of their condition. Right? So God can use a person in spite of sickness, bodily ailments, and any physical problem. However, this does not automatically mean that the condition they are in is God's best for them. With me? Like God is not using them because of their sickness or ailment. God works in spite of the situation. He is not limited by our limitations. He works because of his purpose and grace given to us in Jesus Christ. Right? What does he do? He works because of his purpose and grace given to us in Jesus Christ. Right? Sickness or no sickness. Right? That is why he is God. So when God uses a person in spite of his sickness or ailment, we glorify God and not the sickness. But sickness is still something we need to fight and resist. Okay, and finally, keep pressing in for more. 
any failure is on our side, not God's. Again, keep pressing in for more for his anointing and revelation on how to bring healing to all and as many as, just the way Jesus did. Okay, keep pressing in for more just the way Jesus did. He is our standard. We must press in to do his work and even greater works. Right? Okay, so what have we covered so far in this, uh, when, when we try to address this question of why, uh, why doesn't everyone get healed? Well, we don't know the answer. We won't always have the answer. But how we respond to that question when you are asked or when you, when you yourself ask is very important. And it is important that you don't compromise the truth or change the theology or your understanding of God. And it is okay to simply say, I don't know, but just continue to press in, ask God for insight, spending more time with him and being sensitive uh, to learning to hear his voice or recognize his voice, his heart for people and glorify God, not, not the condition. Uh, don't be impressed by the devil. Don't be impressed by the sickness. Um, so nothing is impossible with God. Our God is greater and bigger than any sickness, any name of, of, of sickness that, is, uh, that has ever been mentioned. Okay, and God is sovereign to use us in spite of our condition and not because of our condition. And finally, keep pressing in for more. Okay, um, don't worry, we are coming towards the end of this chapter. Everybody said email. Okay, um, so the next question here is why are some healings gradual? Okay, why are some healings gradual? Um, now, see, it says here in the ministry of Jesus, other than the one incident where he touched a blind man twice, we see all other healings and deliverance happen instantly. Okay. However, when we minister, there are many times when healings take place gradually over time. Right? Once again, a response to this question is really subjective one and depends on individual situation. Okay, So when you come down and we see this chapter here in Mark chapter 8, verse 22 and 26, it says, Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Okay. I'll just highlight that because it's important. He led them out of the town when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him. He asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. And he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. So why did Jesus leave this blind man out of town to minister to him? Why did Jesus have to touch him twice before his sight was restored completely? Why did Jesus tell him? not to return to his town or tell anyone in the town. Okay. Um, so at least four of Jesus' disciples came from Bethsaida. That is Andrew, Simon, Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel uh, for, were from the city of Bethsaida. Okay. Bethsaida was one of the cities that Lord Jesus rebuked for their unwillingness to respond to the mighty miracles they saw. Okay, that means they had an element of unbelief in them. They did not receive uh, the works of God well. Okay, so it is obvious that the city was unbelieving and unreceptive to the miracles of Jesus, possibly because of their wise and prudent people who then corrupted the rest of the residents in the city. At least one, at least on one other occasion, um, at Jairus' home, we see Jesus putting out all those who ridiculed, who were unbelieving and receptive to his ministry. You know, we, you know, in Mark chapter 5, verse 40, we see that he goes to the house of Jairus and is in the same town and he sends everybody out 
the who were all unbelieving and just had his disciples before he ministered healing and deliverance. Okay, so although the passage does not state this, it is quite possible that the reason that the Lord Jesus took this man out of the town, then ministered to him and gave him instructions not to go back into the town or tell the people, was to separate him and secure him from the unbelief and lack of receptivity that prevailed in the town. Okay, was to separate him and secure him from the unbelief and lack of receptivity that prevailed in the town. And quite the same reason why the Lord Jesus did not permit anyone except Peter, James, John, and the girl's parent to be around when he raised Jairus' daughter back to life. In other cases of blind people being healed, the Lord Jesus ministered freely, restoring their sight in response to their faith. Right? While the passage of Mark 8 in Mark 8 makes no mention of the faith or lack of it in this blind man at Bethsaida, it is possible that he may have been influenced by the prevailing unbelief in the city. Right? And so he, Jesus starts praying and then he starts seeing partially. And then because he could see partially the first time, you say, okay, I can see men walking like trees. That must have encouraged his faith to grow a little bit. Right? And then okay, as, his, as, his, as his belief was growing, as his faith was growing, Jesus heals him uh, go, and goes, goes ahead and completes the healing. Okay, so some lessons we can take back from this incident with the blind man at Bethsaida is what we learn to separate people from an environment of doubt and unbelief to help their faith. An atmosphere is super important, right? The atmosphere you grow is important because an environment that you surround yourself with can, can shape the way you think and you live your life, isn't it? Right? Um, and Jesus died for us to have a renewing of our mind. That means the way we think had to be changed. In other words, he's just saying that we need to come out of the earthly environment and start thinking from the kingdom's perspective. Right? That is the renewing of our mind. And this, we see that Jesus doing in this scenario is that, uh, and as we learn to minister divine healing, uh, we need to learn to separate people from an environment of doubt and unbelief as leaders, as ministers of God, it is our responsibility um, to do that. We also encourage people's faith, even with a gradual improvement in their physical condition and not press through till the healing and press through till the healing is complete. Right? Uh, another question that, uh, that again being asked is, why are some healings partial and not complete? Right? Why are some people, some healings partial and not complete? Right? Okay, now, the person that you might pray for might have a multiple physical condition, right? The person might need a healing for their neck pain and their ankle pain uh, and their wrist pain, right? They can come to you with multiple prayer requests for them to be healed. Um, and as you keep praying, what is important, again, in all of these questions, how we respond is super crucial, right? Uh, and as we pray, if, if, if their wrist pain goes first and not their neck and their ankle pain still the same, uh, you don't give up. It's like, oh, okay, you know, nothing is happening. And what, you know, and you get discouraged and you take it as failure and just move on. No, we, you can't respond that way. We give thanks to everything and rejoice with them for what God is doing, even in the small process. Right? If God has healed their wrist first, uh, just go, go ahead and give thanks uh, to what God has done. And then you continue to pray um, you know, for, for the complete healing. Okay? So it says here, another thing we may observe in ministering healing is that sometimes people with multiple problems get healed of some conditions and continue to have other ailments persist in their bodies. Now, here again, we will not have all the reasons why complete healing did not occur. 
We must thank the Lord for every small progress in recovery that we see. Okay, we must thank the Lord for every small progress in recovery we see. Okay, if you see a small progress that's happening in a person's body, give thanks. Give thanks. Okay, don't um, don't as I said, you know, don't glorify the condition, but glorify God. Right, glorify Him for. For the what for that for that healing that he's just ministered and then continue to pray okay keep praising god keep pressing in to see complete healing and deliverance continue to encourage the individual and not in any way shame or condemn the person all right you guys with me so far okay continue to en encourage the individual and not in any way shame or condemn that person Okay, that shouldn't even be a temptation. Okay, and so moving on. The three heart attitudes that God allow uh, that allows God to work miracles. The three heart attitudes. Okay, one is faith, expectancy, and intense desire. Now remember, all these points are in line with co-partnering with God, right? We started off by learning about his sovereignty, that he's all powerful, all knowing. He can do what he wants to do when he wants to do because he is sovereign, right? And we saw that there are exceptions where he steps in and ministers divine healing, but that is not the norm. What the norm is that he wants to partner with you and me. And so for that, the attitudes that he expects is faith, expectancy, an intense desire. Right? So when ministering to people, we must walk in faith, expectancy, and intense desire. We minister healing and deliverance with faith in our hearts. Our unbelief can be a hindrance to the power of God flowing through us. We must expect people to get well. We must expect people to get well. When you pray for him, it is possible and it is natural for you to feel a little nervous. Okay, what if I pray and he doesn't get healed? Been there, right? <laughs> but when you pray, you must expect for the people to get well, not because you are praying, but you know who God is, right? And he wants to see that the individual well and whole, right? Expect people to be delivered and made whole. Have an intense desire to see people healed. Right? You need to have the intense desire to see people here. As we minister to people, we need to help them come into a place of faith, expectancy, and have intense desire to be made whole. Okay? Um, as leaders, as I keep saying, as leaders and as ministers of God, we need to help them. Right? We need to shepherd them. Right? We will be that we are their shepherd. Uh, we need to shepherd them to come into a place of faith, expectancy, and have intense desire to be made whole. Okay, and finally, in conclusion, uh, some of the hindrances uh, to receive healing. Okay, um, well, this is not a complete list. Um, There's just a few hindrances that's list out here. Uh, you know that can be like a roadblock to receive healing. Uh, once again, it's, it's being reiterated here, so it never criticize, condemn, blame, or shame the individual when ministering. Okay, if, if this is being repeated uh, at least more than once, it's very important for us to remember this, right? Never criticize, condemn, blame, or shame the individual when ministering. We must not try and take the place of God in people's lives. We are just earthen vessels making ourselves available in God's hands to be used for his purposes. Right? So here are the few reasons or hindrances. One is lack of knowledge. Right? In Hosea 4, 6, it says, uh, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Right? In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, he says that my people are taken into exile or my people are taken into captivity due to the lack of understanding or knowledge, right? Um, let me see, lack of faith. 
is another hindrance. Considering the ailments as the will of God. That's a big one. Right? Lack of persistent desire to get well. Not really wanting to be well. Uh, you know, you've given up. You stop praying. Stop asking, saying, okay, you tried receiving prayer for this, what you're going through, the physical condition, but nothing's happened and you just give up. Uh, lack of persistent desire to get well. Yeah. Being passive in resisting sickness. Right? Wrong posture that leads to passive belief. If it is God's will, he will heal me. God will heal me in his time. Whatever happens is God's will and so on. Right? wrong heart attitude um this might be the last point but then it's crucial wrong heart attitudes anger resentment jealousy unforgiveness bitterness and so on um but if and all of this can just make your soul and your spirit sing okay, Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30 says a sound heart is life to the body but envy is rottenness to the bones. Proverbs 17.22 says, A merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Okay, these are all the hindrances that's just been mentioned. And then there are destructive lifestyles. And right? if a person continues to do things that are self-destructive to their health, like, continuing abusing their bodies with drugs, alcohol, smoking, and so on. And other unknowns, we do not know every cause that could hinder a person from receiving healing and deliverance, okay? We do not know every cause. So we learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, okay? So we learn to listen to the Holy Spirit and he will show us what to do in specific situations. Okay, um, that is the conclusion of uh, chapter two. Um, I just want to um, stop here and I don't know we are early. But, uh, you know, as we've covered a lot of content, I realized that, and I think um, this is one of those courses uh, that is pretty intense with the content. Uh, I would encourage you to go back and reread um, everything that we've covered. You know, covered or at least meditate, re meditate on what it is, right? Because each and every one of you, each and every single person, right? We are called to live life the way Jesus did, right? To commission, we have all been commissioned and commanded to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead. And yes, you and I, okay? Um, and so seek and pursue. God, to fill, asking him to fill your heart and learning to recognize his voice, his heart for the people, his love for people is crucial as we learn to minister divine healing. Okay. Um, I hope, I really wish I could have played that video. Really nice, but uh, I see if something can be done by next class. But uh, the video that I wanted to play is a movie called a small clip from the movie called uh, The Father of Lights. I'm not sure if you've heard. Um, yeah, if you, if you take it out when you can. So. But that's about it for today. And I'll stop. Um, I hope everybody's doing all right. Okay, so I'll stop the recording now. And, um, and uh, stop. Hey, uh, Subhishu, sorry, I don't have the link for the video. It is something that I 